so the so this uh, this talk is really a combination of two studies that were done uh, almost two years uh, apart. Uh, the um, uh, you know, this is the outline. What I'm trying to do here. Uh, I'm interested in uh, risk assessment of co complex uh, cyber-physical systems uh, deployed in adverse environment, in other words, where attacks are uh, possible and likely. Uh, I'm sure that this uh, group is aware that the uh, best uh, practices often rely on expert judgment, uh, but this uh, seems uh, almost not very uh, useful uh, when you are ask, answering question, is this system good enough? Uh, or is the cyber risk acceptable? You may follow the guidelines, you may have satisfied every uh, recommendations, and yet uh, it is difficult usually to say whether the system is uh, uh, secure. And especially when you start, you answer questions like uh, what is listed here, how do I spend the given budget uh, on cyber resilience uh, improvement in a cost-effective manner? Can I do it? Or well, we know, and there are recommendations in various uh, uh, documents uh, that the defense in death is a good idea, but how do we apply uh, defense in death uh, uh, rationally if we have uh, limited resources uh, on it? And the problem that I have been interested in trying to make progress with is uh, to develop a, mo uh, a model of unknown attacks, uh, attacks which are due to zero day uh, vulnerabilities, which are useful for uh, risk assessment. Uh, we all know that uh, whatever models uh, we build, they are going to be wrong, but some models, uh, as uh, George Ox uh, put it uh, quite nicely, uh, some models are useful. So this is exactly what I am uh, after. And uh, the, I'll describe the approach uh, taken. Uh, uh, the, the model of the effect of successful uh, cyber attack uh, may, uh, you may find a bit uh, unusual because I'm trying to uh, capture this uh, impact uh, via the decay in software reliability. If a piece of software is uh, compromised, um, uh, naturally uh, we we, we anticipate it uh, to perform worse than if uh, this software has not been uh, compromised. And uh, once the model was uh, developed and I looked at the various uh, uh, questions, which I briefly will summarize uh, today, then the next uh, question was, okay, but can we validate this model? Can we uh, get some evidence that it is indeed uh, useful? And this is the second part of the talk where I applied uh, the model uh, of uh, cyber attacks uh, within a complex model of uh, uh, interdependent uh, critical infrastructures. So we're talking about the uh, power transmission network, uh, telecommunications, SCADA uh, modeled uh, in its entirety, uh, well, quite a complex uh, model. And in this model, uh, I did uh, two things, a specific attack, was modeled in, in high fidelity, step by step. Uh, and if successful, it would uh, lead to a, a particular alteration in the cyber physical devices. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, changing the uh, threshold of a uh, power line uh, tripping device. And the second uh, uh, way of modeling the effects of cyber attacks was to apply the abstract model, which uh, I will explain in the first half of the talk, and I'll uh, then give you the uh, results, how these two ways of modeling the, uh, the devices in, in a very detailed way, modeling the uh, effect of cyber attacks and modeling it uh, fairly abstractly, pretending that uh, I didn't know the details about the uh, attack, how the two observations uh, uh, from this complex uh, simulator uh, compared, and uh, there will be a bit of a uh, discussion. So this is what I'm uh, hoping to uh, to do today. Uh, the talk is uh, a bit uh, long. I probably will skip some of the slides uh, for which um, 
I would like to apologize uh, in advance, unless there is uh, there are questions and you are particularly keen to uh, find out the, the details. Okay. Now, uh, by the way, I should probably go to this uh, mode. Uh, do you still see my screen? Yes, Peter. Okay. So known versus unknown attack. This is the philosophy, really, uh, about how we deal with these uh, different uh, uh, scenarios. Um, the the if when we deal with the known attacks, there are two uh, broadly two ways of uh, doing it. Uh, option one is to say we will provide defense using methods uh, which don't require uh, detailed knowledge about the attack, how it can be launched, what the consequences are, uh, and so on. And there are methods like this, uh, like this uh, the so-called intrusion tolerance, uh, based on uh, proactive uh, recovery has been uh, developed uh, over the last uh, few years. And uh, this uh, solution effectively uh, under certain circumstances uh, provided, uh, first of all, this is a based on replication. Rather than have a single piece of software, you need to have multiple copies. And these copies are uh, kept in sync uh, uh, quite uh, tightly. Uh, there is an algorithm of uh, agreement between the, the replicas, the so-called Byzantine agreement uh, protocol, and periodically, uh, uh, replicas are cleansed. This is where the proactive recovery comes from. Uh, here, uh, proactively, we assume that maybe one replica has been compromised without us uh, even noticing. Therefore, this replica will be cleansed and clean copy from uh, uh, will be reinstalled. And even if it has been compromised now, the clean copy will uh, have eliminated the consequences of this um, this successful attack. So this is one view. And uh, provided the uh, assumptions for uh, proactive recovery are satisfied, which is uh, typically uh, we make assumptions that uh, no more than a certain number of uh, replicas will be compromised simultaneously or will become compromised at the same time. If these uh, uh, conditions are satisfied, then uh, we know that uh, we don't really care uh, what exactly the uh, attack is uh, uh, doing. And there have been demonstrations in industrial settings uh, showing that indeed the uh, uh, intrusion tolerance with proactive recovery is uh, uh, quite effective. The second option is to say, okay, uh, can we build an abstract model which doesn't make uh, many assumptions. Uh, and uh, uh, by the nature of the abstraction, uh, the model is uh, applicable to many attacks, uh, possibly to any of the, including the uh, unknown attacks. So this is uh, the, the line that uh, I have taken. And the next uh, question with this approach is, okay, we may be able to build it, but uh, is the, can we uh, make this uh, model uh, useful? And uh, a few years ago, uh, I published uh, this uh, paper with the model. It was the International Symposium on Software Reliability Engineering, quite a, a significant uh, uh, conference. Essentially, the idea here is that uh, the impact of uh, a successful attack is uh, modeled by uh, uh, successful attack reduces the reliability of uh, the software. And I had a particular uh, software in, in mind, uh, uh, protection software, which is used in safety critical systems. They are called every now and then in case uh, there is uh, some uh, anomalies, the uh, object uh, under control gets out of its uh, safety envelope and the protection system is uh, meant to uh, shut down this uh, uh, device or plant uh, uh, what happened. So the, what is the idea here? The, uh, there are several states states in the uh, life uh, uh, time of this uh, software. One of the state is uh, labeled here as clean. This is the clean before any attack. Then under the different attacks, the, uh, the state changes from being clean to uh, S mu one, S mu two, S mu three, uh, mu three, uh, mu one, two, three, and so on is an abstraction representing 
what I call uh, malicious demand. So essentially these are uh, different uh, attacks on the uh, specific uh, software. And uh, uh, assumption, additional assumption made uh, in this model is that uh, we'll have at most one attack at a time. Over time, there may be more uh, different attacks. For instance, from clean, I go to mu1, then this may uh, uh, get to mu1 and mu2, uh, succeeded uh, to compromise my software, and so on. So what is the uh, model of uh, uh, if the attacks are su successful, what are the consequences? So this is a very abstract uh, picture, but this is useful for uh, protection system. For protection system, our software, which is labeled here, the box uh, P, uh, there are demands whenever it reads the environment or the state of the object uh, which is uh, uh, protected. And then uh, uh, these demands every now and then will be anomalous. They will uh, generate the demand to the software and the software will process them by I, for instance, uh, shutting down the, uh, the particular uh, process. Uh, and here the idea is that some demands will be processed correctly and some, uh, despite all the efforts to make them uh, work correctly, maybe may lead to unacceptable results. Rather than uh, shutting down the, the process, uh, something else may happen. So this is well known. Uh, people dealing with the safety, they know that um, uh, uh, we cannot make uh, safety critical software perfect. Uh, we're trying to reduce it to uh, an acceptable level and build a comp uh, build an assurance case demonstrating that the software is uh, acceptably uh, reliable. So, what is the impact of uh, attacks? The assumption here is that uh, the so-called uh, uh, domains where the software doesn't uh, operate uh, correctly will be changed as a result of uh, a successful attack. In other words, the initial, uh, the initial uh, failure region, uh, so-called, before any attack has been uh, applied successfully to the uh, piece of software, will eventually uh, get extended by more demands uh, finding themselves in uh, becoming uh, uh, part of this uh, failure region. So essentially, this is um, uh, the essence of this uh, uh, model of successful attacks. And here, details. For instance, if I have multiple uh, malicious demand, then mu one and MD mu 2 they bring their failure regions, one, five, eight, and uh, another set. The union of this uh, uh, micro, uh, micro uh, failure domains will be uh, added to the uh, domains, uh, to the uh, uh, demand space of the uh, compromised uh, software. And if we have more demands, of course, this uh, range of uh, uh, this union uh, will uh, uh, grow. So all this uh, complication was uh, done uh, with the two channel uh, system in mind, because in safety, uh, uh, if you are looking for uh, to uh, achieve safety uh, rather than protection system are typically uh, at least two channels, in some cases even more than uh, two channels. Uh, they may be uh, employing the so-called uh, software design diversity. In other words, functionally they are uh, equivalent, but the implementations uh, of the two channels is uh, different in the hope that uh, the two channels are not going to fail simultaneous. And this is very well developed uh, theory and practice uh, uh, for over 30 years. If somebody is interested, I'm happy to take this uh, offline. And then if the, uh, but despite this uh, design diversity and the hope that they are not going to uh, always fail simultaneously, uh, simultaneous failures could, cannot be ruled out. The, they still may occur, hopefully not uh, very uh, uh, frequently. And uh, there is a way of us expressing the probability of uh, failure of the one out of two uh, 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 system, meaning that the system is assumed to work correctly if at least one of the two channels uh, processes the, uh, the demand correctly. And the formula is expressed here. It links the marginal probability of failure. Yeah. And the uh, uh, covariance between the uh, random processes which uh, capture the scores 
uh, of the two channels on the individual demands coming from from the demand space of um, these two channel system. So these are details. Uh, this is not essential for 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 me to explain what is uh, going on here. Um, so when the two channel system is under attack, um, we each of the channels will have uh, the uh, failure regions uh, enlarged as a consequence of uh, these attacks, and uh, we uh, should anticipate that this uh, extension of the failure regions may lead to enlarge uh, overlap between the uh, failure region of the two uh, system. So in, in a sense, uh, this is exactly what I'm looking for, to see what, uh, what is the impact of uh, attacks on the uh, reliability of uh, this uh, two-channel uh, system. And here it is important to realize that uh, uh, how uh, this two-channel system is attacked uh, makes uh, a difference. The attacks may be uh, what I call independent, the adversary may not be aware that they're dealing with a two-channel system and they may attack one of the channel at the time. Uh, for instance, uh, select at random uh, one of the two channels. Or the adver adversary may be quite knowledgeable. They may be clear that they're dealing with two uh, attacks. And in this case, they may launch uh, a synchronized attack, which will be trying to uh, compromise both uh, software channel, possibly uh, with a so small interval between uh, uh, attacking uh, the two uh, channels. In both cases, it is possible that uh, uh, the uh, reliability of the system, uh, of the two channel system may deteriorate as a result of multiple attacks or a single synchronized uh, attack. And then the interesting part uh, for this uh, study is to, to look at um, the maintenance. Uh, we all know that uh, if we take the proactive recovery, periodically the channels may be cleansed. With two channels, we can take one offline, cleanse it, and return it back. And uh, so for a period, uh, the system will be reduced to a single channel, but it still may do his, may uh, provide the service that it is designed to provide. Or uh, uh, we can even apply uh, patching. Patching is uh, to uh, get rid of some vulnerabilities. In other words, uh, some of, uh, the, uh, of the demands uh, being processed correctly as a result of uh, patching uh, may be uh, fixed. So as a result of patching, the uh, initial reliability of the system may uh, improve in comparison with uh, what it was uh, uh, prior to patching. With cleansing, we merely uh, remove the additional failure domains and restore the uh, reliability of the channels to what they were prior to any successful uh, 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 attack on them. Um, so this, this is an attempt to show that uh, we have a, a complicated uh, way of uh, uh, dealing with cleansing, uh, patching. Uh, if we only apply uh, cleansing, it will be Deteriorate, deteriorate, deteriorate until cleansing takes place. The uh, reliability is restored. If it is patching, it is more complicated because the uh, initial reliability of the channels may, uh, in fact, grow. Uh, okay, maintenance, uh, mutex. Uh, we already said uh, one channel at a time is taken off for maintenance, either cleansing or patching, and the system will, for a period of time, while this uh, maintenance is complete will be provided by a, a single uh, channel. And clearly we can see uh, with two channels uh, or with these two regimes, uh, we can see four uh, possibility. Applying no maintenance whatsoever, no cleansing, no patching, uh, which probably is uh, quite typical for many systems. Uh, apply cleansing only. This is, seems quite uh, attractive because you can do it uh, without really uh, figuring out how to remove the uh, 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 vulnerabilities. Some vulnerabilities become known uh, before you, uh, Apache's uh, becomes available, you still apply uh, cleansing, uh, re re restoring the uh, system reliability to, to, the, to the initial state. And of course, once uh, Apache is available, uh, we can combine cleansing and, um, uh, and patching patching regularly as new patches uh, become available. We apply them and the uh, uh, software reliability may, as a result, uh, improve. 
Um, okay, so the, this was the model. And in this uh, paper, I looked at the uh, developer uh, probabilistic model, which is based on the so-called uh, stochastic activity networks formalism. It's an extension of uh, petri nets, uh, quite a significant uh, extensions, and uh, writing some uh, C code, especially to initialize this uh, relatively complicated uh, uh, model. Um, and there are a range of parameters which I had to uh, select, different maintenance regimes, frequency of maintenance, uh, uh, how well, often, and then the attacks, different studies, uh, uh, pretending that uh, this uh, uh, two-channel system is uh, uh, subjected to either independent or synchronized attacks. Um, and it, what was the utility function, the, the measure of interest in order to compare these uh, different uh, cases? I look at the mean probability of uh, system failure. Remember when we discussed this uh, failure regions, if the, each of the failure regions may be hit by demand uh, with a particular probability. So the total probability of all these failure regions define the probability of uh, uh, system failure at any instance of time. And because these uh, 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 studies were repeating multiple times uh, Monte Carlo simulation, effectively simulating the uh, scenarios, um, the measure is uh, taking the mean value over multiple uh, repetitions of the probability of uh, system failure. So this was number one of reward. And the second was, um, let's pretend that the system will be in operation for reasonably long uh, period of time up to say one year. Then the, uh, the second measure of interest was what is the distribution of time to system failure. In other words, waiting for both channels to, uh, to fail simultaneously, which will constitute the uh, system failure. So measuring the length of this uh, time to system failure was the second uh, measure of uh, interest. Um, uh, the, the session for this uh, time to failure experiments was set to 350 days, uh, almost uh, uh, a calendar year. And then the, uh, the mean probability of system failure was, uh, uh, okay, both measures, mean probability and time to system failure were split uh, into eight sub-intervals of 50 days so that we can see any trends, the, especially how the uh, different uh, maintenance uh, policies affect the, the two measures of uh, interest. You'll see it very clearly uh, on the next few slides. Um, so here, obviously, this is a probabilistic model. I had to uh, set uh, a number of uh, parameters uh, uh, to choose the values, and I tried to uh, set them from uh, plausible ranges. For instance, the size of the individual failure regions uh, added by a successful attack uh, was uh, 10 to the minus 4, to 2 10 to the minus 4. So this is 1 in, in 10,000. Uh, demands to one in 5,000 demands. This was uh, the range of uh, additional uh, failure uh, added by a successful attack. Uh, attack rate, uh, this was uh, not very frequent. Uh, uh, this is uh, this a relatively rare tax. What is the uh, uh, attack, the, the probability uh, of a reduction of malicious uh, demand? Uh, and so on. So the initial probability of failure of the two channels before any of the attacks was set to relatively small uh, value, uh, one in uh, 500 uh, demands. So this is a, a reasonable for safety critical system uh, uh, SEAL uh, 3 uh, and so on. I, I don't think I'll spend, uh, so you, you get the idea. There are parameters, they're chosen from a particular range and uh, of course they affect uh, uh, the uh, observations. And now, Briefly about the observations, if we have uh, independent attacks, I compared the three of uh, the four possibilities. Independent attacks, cleansing, no patching, no cleansing, no patching, uh, no cleansing and patching, and patching and cleansing. Okay, so doing nothing is the worst. The average system PFD grows uh, quite uh, considerably. Uh, uh, over by the end of this uh, period. This picture is uh, the same, but the range is uh, zoomed in in order to capture the three which seem practically indistinguishable on the first slide. So the first three, 
where there is at least cleansing or patching uh, uh, shown here. And interestingly, we can see that the cleansing uh, performs uh, reasonably well up to the best, uh, not uh, better than the patching until uh, uh, 300 uh, days. And after this, uh, uh, patching becomes uh, uh, better. Combining the two, not surprisingly, is uh, the, the best uh, uh, option. Um, so here, I uh, if we vary the uh, interval of cleansing, how frequently we do it, uh, then uh, this uh, affects the, uh, the behavior. The more frequently we cleanse, the better, but then there is a, a side effect because cleansing means that uh, we take the one of the channels off for a period of time, which means that during this cleansing, if it is uh, done very uh, quick, uh, very frequently, the system, in fact, uh, for prolonged periods uh, will be uh, a single channel uh, failure. The, the one which is under cleansing is uh, not uh, providing the additional uh, uh, reliability. And here, independent attacks for uh, for the uh, for either cleansing or uh, patching or both is uh, shown about uh, shows how this uh, probability of uh, surviving a mission of particular length, five, 50 days, uh, 100 days, up to 350 days, uh, is changing as a result of uh, the adopted uh, policy of uh, maintaining the, uh, the system. Uh, this one is uh, uh, cleansing, but no patching. Uh, deteriorates uh, fastest, probably not uh, surprising. We can see now that, uh, although here it is uh, reasonably, uh, it performs reasonably well, if we look at the uh, chances of surviving, uh, cleansing on its own is uh, nowhere near. The other two are practically indistinguishable. They're very, very close. Uh, Excuse me, Peter. Separately. Now, the, this, is, this was one of the interesting observations. Oh, um, Peter? Yes. Sorry, sorry to cut you. I think if you can change the wheel, uh, the graphs are a bit unclear. I mean, we are looking at the presenter view at the moment. So the what other- shall I, What shall I do? I think we are looking at the presenter view. We are looking at two slides. So, so the, the visibility is not that clear of the- Is it better now? Uh, I think if, yeah, this is better, but- Shall I keep it like this? Even if you go to the slideshow and if you, share the you know there are two views one is the presenter view one is the you know that one slide board view so i'll be i'm not sure how to do it uh, let me see whether i'll be able to figure out um, yeah but i don't think it's really a problem anyhow anyhow it's fine peter is fine if you if you can't do it it's fine okay um Okay, so let's uh, let's continue. So this is about independent and synchronized attacks. So again, uh, if the adversary is uh, uh, clever and they know that they're uh, dealing with a two-channel system, they launch uh, almost simultaneously with a long uh, with a, a short interval between the attack. And if they succeed, they will succeed eventually against uh, both uh, channels. Therefore, the system PFD. Uh, this is the uh, synchronous attack. So the uh, average system uh, PFD is uh, probability of failure on demand with the synchronous attack is significantly higher. So the system is worse. So this is what we would expect. And effectively, uh, the same is uh, seen with the probability of success. Again, the deterioration is uh, faster with the synchronous uh, attacks. But then these two slides uh, show a bit of, uh, the, the picture is not uh, as uh, uh, clear cut. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if we do, for instance, this guy here, synchronous attacks with uh, patching and cleansing, it is uh, in a sense uh, in this uh, range where we have, uh, is mixing quite nicely with the independent attacks. So there is a, uh, some insight uh, telling us that the maintenance uh, policy, uh, in fact, may uh, counter quite successfully the, uh, the uh, synchronous uh, uh, attacks. Um, and then this one was uh, uh, a bit of a stretch. Uh, I decided to look also at the case where the, uh, the patching uh, is applied only if uh, a system compromise is uh, uh, detected. 
and depending on the probability of detection of uh, this uh, uh, of a compromise, uh, we have the this uh, no cleansing and uh, uh, patching only. They become indistinguishable if the range of uh, uh, probability of failure is no lower than uh, 0.5. But if it goes to 0.2, then the uh, system PFD is significantly worse. Uh, and uh, for the similar observations for the uh, probability of success uh, surviving a longer uh, mission. Um, so this is the uh, this is a summary of these uh, uh, studies. Um, the fact that the synchronous attacks make the situation worse is uh, not a surprise. The value of uh, doing it, uh, doing a study with this model, is that you get a bit of uh, additional uh, insight either under different uh, parameterization. Uh, but the real uh, story here is that. Uh, Depending on how uh, how you assess your uh, cyber uh, security, if uh, you have a uh, two channel or more than two channels, but the attacks nevertheless are done uh, as independent attack in my uh, terminology. In other words, uh, selecting at random one of the attacks, maybe the uh, assessment conducted this way will give uh, uh, some uh, dangerously optimistic conclusion about how good the system is. The, if uh, when the system is uh, attacked by a, a more knowledgeable adversary uh, aware of the system architecture, then uh, uh, the conclusions uh, may be quite uh, uh, different. Uh, if somebody is interested, uh, this is already uh, released in the public uh, domain. You can try and look at the details what I have done. Um, for the replic replication systems, uh, the study is also quite interesting because I started with this uh, view that uh, proactive recovery is seen as a panacea. Um, the, uh, there are these industrial applications. Um, uh, colleagues from uh, uh, John Hopkins University deployed the uh, uh, proactive uh, scatter system with proactive recovery and then invited uh, a team from the uh, one of the national labs with, uh, in the US and gave them all the documentation and say, try to hack uh, uh, this uh, deployment. And after two days of trying, they gave up. Uh, so this is indeed uh, quite uh, uh, a significant improvement, the uh, pro proactive recovery, but it really depends on uh, how knowledgeable the uh, adversaries are. If, uh, if they try to launch uh, uh, simultaneous attacks on the multiple channels, then uh, we may expect uh, that uh, the performance is not going to be as good as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, under independent uh, attacks. So there is scope here to apply the ideas from these models to uh, intruder tolerance. And in fact, I have been doing it with uh, uh, a colleague from uh, John Hopkins University. Uh, Inherent assumptions. Okay, so so this is the this was this part the conceptual model. Uh, it is a conceptual for practical assessment. Maybe it's a bit of a stretch uh, uh, because it relies on too many parameters, uh, and uh, maybe uh, it, it should be treated like this as a, a source of uh, additional in, in insight. Um, now, the second uh, part is uh, about how we validate this uh, attack model. It's so good to, to play with the numbers, um, uh, run them, uh, and so on. But can we uh, see uh, some, uh, some value in, uh, in this uh, attack in practical uh, applications? Uh, and uh, I'll show you what uh, we have done. So it looks like, uh, depending on what we're looking at, uh, uh, a model, abstract model like this, can potentially be uh, useful to deal with uh, uh, with uh, zero day uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, but it is only from a certain point of uh, view. So let's uh, look at uh, what we have done and. Before I give you the uh, outcomes, I will need to spend a few minutes on, on the simulator of this uh, critical infrastructure. Years, uh, a few years ago, we built this uh, simulator. Uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, uh, power systems may have come across the, 
this abbreviation Nordic 32, allegedly a simplified version of the power transmission network in the Scandinavian countries. So the model is here and it is used quite uh, extensively by power engineers to run various uh, uh, studies uh, uh, and publish uh, research uh, papers. Four zones, uh, north, uh, central, south, and equip, whatever it means. 19 generators, uh, a number of high voltage lines, number of sinks, these are connections to uh, power distribution networks, a number of bus bars, these little lines here uh, uh, called the bus bars, uh, and they are in subs substations. Substations are houses uh, with a lot of uh, equipment. Then uh, in a Again, in a, in a EU project a few years ago, we uh, colleagues, again, power engineers, developed uh, a model of uh, the substation, the equipment in a substation. These are uh, local area networks uh, with switches, and these are the so-called bays. So this is the bus bar, which we saw on the previous uh, picture. So each of these bus bar is uh, connected uh, with a range of uh, uh, devices. So this is a generator, generator nine from that picture. Here we have a, a switch to connect them to the uh, trans uh, distribution networks, another line transformer bay to reduce it to a lower voltage, uh, uh, line bay to connect it to something else and load bay. So, so this is the principle and all of them are uh, controlled by a, a local area network. Uh, there is a substation servers, but then all eventually are connected uh, via SCADA to the, to the uh, control centers and each of these substations will have its own uh, firewall. Uh, very schematically, the uh, SCADA is uh, shown here. We have control center, the backup control center uh, lines, these uh, data centers uh, serving different uh, purposes. Uh, and again, I, I can't uh, spend uh, time to explain uh, in full details exactly what we uh, uh, have done, but each of these uh, little symbols is uh, represented as a modeling element with a particular uh, purpose. It may be, uh, if it is a computer, the computer will either work or uh, not work correctly. Eventually, it may be uh, compromised. Um, there are special purpose software which is uh, run in the control centers trying to identify uh, bad data. If uh, some of the sensors are faulty, uh, they will run this special purpose software in order to do uh, what is known as uh, uh, state estimation. What is the voltage currents in uh, different uh, uh, locations of the power transmission networks and so on. And uh, there are some interesting uh, studies uh, conducted by other people to say uh, if uh, the remote sensors, uh, RTUs or PMU uh, or synchrophysers as they are known, are compromised, then there are interesting uh, uh, consequences which effectively may even defeat the usefulness of the special purpose uh, software, especially if uh, the adversaries are uh, knowledgeable and try to create a consistent but uh, nevertheless incorrect uh, picture of the state of the uh, power system. So all this is just uh, the, the background. The attack vector, uh, large perimeter to defend uh, many uh, devices, uh, firewalls, uh, uh, directly attacking RTUs, PMUs, uh, uh, SPS, special purpose software also can be attacked and uh, compromised. Uh, SCADA itself, denial of service, uh, uh, makes it uh, impossible to control uh, remotely the, uh, the substations uh, and, and so on. Uh, so again, when it comes to modeling cyber attacks, I'm sure that uh, your group is perfectly aware there are a range of uh, uh, formalism, attack trees, attack graphs, attack defense graphs. Uh, advice formalism is uh, something which is less well known, but uh, quite powerful developed by the University of uh, Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, stochastic activity networks, the ones that I used in the previous work, uh, are also used to, to model cyber attacks, and many others, CSML, UML sequence diagrams, uh, activity diagrams, and uh, so on. Um, so in this work, the uh, model uh, was is 
the model used is either very detailed step-by-step -step, uh, 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 model of the attacks, and I'm going to show a few uh, examples in the next slide, or one of these uh, abstract models which was developed uh, early and which I summarized uh, 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 earlier today. Um, Okay, so uh, the more competitive proactive recovery, this, this is what we already discussed. So the abstract model of the attacks is in fact the simplest version of uh, what I developed uh, in the ISRE model. We have a, a take a piece of software, it is either working uh, uh, correctly or it is compromised, just compromised. We don't have these uh, multiple states uh, representing different degree of uh, software being compromised. And then there are, in addition to states, failed or under maintenance, uh, which we saw uh, with the other work. In terms of uh, uh, Markov chain, we can uh, show it with uh, four states, okay, uh, failed, and these two uh, are related to either maintenance or uh, not. Uh, channel is compromised here or channel is uh, uh, failed and compromised. So we have two different uh, uh, states representing the failed state. It may be failed on its own accidentally, or it may, may have failed uh, as a consequence of uh, first being compromised. Uh, okay, so this is uh, again, trying to make the point that uh, here we are applying this uh, abstract model, uh, which I uh, demonstrated uh, earlier. Um, and now, this is uh, an example of a very detailed uh, model on the Nordic uh, 32 substation. So uh, the attack is idle, then there is the uh, attack interval, they will happen every now and then. Uh, the substation is under attack state, then there are two different uh, uh, ways for this attack to uh, uh, progress uh, by the uh, if it is a remote attack, it sh should go through the uh, uh, firewall. Uh, one of the rules may be attacked. Uh, uh, then if uh, the, the firewall is uh, overcome, then there is a, a model of what to do next, either to launch an individual attack, independent attack on one of the channels. Here we're pretending that uh, we'll deal with a, a two-channel uh, uh, device or there will be a synchronized uh, attack. And if it is a uh, uh, one channel, it will be either the first or the second uh, channel, and it may succeed or it may fail. The point of this uh, uh, complicated graph is just to show that this is a quite a detailed uh, uh, representation of uh, how the attack is uh, launched step by uh, step. Um, but the alternative is, to say that uh, we don't really know all these uh, details and we may be just prepared to accept that maybe uh, due to uh, something unknown, uh, some of our uh, components will eventually be uh, uh, compromised. So rather than saying uh, we provide this step-by-step uh, -step, uh, description, we may have a very, very abstract uh, uh, model which says either uh, it, the attack will Will be launched and eventually it may be uh, successful and if it succeed rather than us spelling out what the consequences are switching this uh, uh, bay off uh, a generator a line or a transformer we may just say the effect of the uh, compromise is that the reliability of the compromised uh, 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 device uh, simply is uh, reduced i think it's probably explained uh, uh, here but this is just to say we have a model of the physical world. This is the uh, power transmission network. We have the scale. Each of the substations is uh, represented by its own uh, a detailed uh, uh, a model of what uh, uh, equipment and software is run in the, in the substations. And on top of this, we have the adversary model, which uh, tries to, to do something to our, all this is part of the same uh, of the same uh, model. Um, so, okay, so each of the elements, each little box here or here is uh, effectively represented by this. And we, we have many of them, uh, 
almost uh, 2,000 uh, uh, modeling elements all together in this uh, model. So they are represented, each of the models is represented by a stochastic state machine. Some of the stochastic state machines uh, are not just uh, the four states that we saw, but they may have additional properties. If we are modeling a, a power line, the properties are capacity of this uh, line, uh, 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 this line, if it is a generator, it will have a uh, output power uh, and so on. On top of these uh, bits that I showed, uh, we have deterministic model. Uh, if uh, uh, somewhere some power element is uh, switched off, we calculate uh, the redistribution of uh, power flows through, through the uh, physical uh, system. Um, and then on top of this, we have uh, models of maintenance, which are uh, cleansing, patching, uh, uh, and uh, sample uh, combination of the two. Um, the adversary model, so successful attack affect the state as we saw it, and there might be secondary effect. If uh, the attack leads to something being switched off, then there will be a redistribution of the flows. Uh, further effect, a uh, cascade of tripping events through uh, power lines. So one failed, but through the propagation, there may be uh, overloading of lines, they get tripped and so on. So there are real blackouts that we observed in, in, with these uh, simulations. Um, in terms of uh, what we're interested in, we, we're looking at uh, the so-called rewards or utility function. This is the mean supplied power. Uh, we, we take the simulator and we run multiple simulations of the equivalent of 10 years of operation of this uh, fictitious uh, system, Nordic 32. And uh, we take uh, over this, uh, of the repetitions, the mean supplied power. Uh, mean supplied uh, means if uh, a generator is uh, uh, switched off and uh, if the uh, remaining generator cannot uh, cover the, uh, the required power, something needs to be uh, uh, switched off. Some of the consumers needs to be switched off. And therefore, the, the total power, which in this system is uh, 10,400 uh, megawatts, may in fact go uh, down. And just for illustration, this is a, a trace from the simulator. You can see we start with the maximum. Eventually, at certain moments in time, this uh, relative time, fraction of time of this uh, 10 years, um, some power is lost, um, more is lost, uh, and so on. Uh, and here, what are the uh, substations which are uh, affected? So this is as detailed as uh, uh, one needs. Um, study and solver, Monte Carlo simulation. Mm. We repeated multiple times uh, in this particular work. We conducted 300 uh, rounds of this uh, equivalence of 10 years of operations of uh, Nordic 32. Uh, our loss uh, is a random variable. Every uh, round, every moment in time, it is different. Uh, and the uh, loss uh, within this uh, single run of uh, 10 years will be the, the average uh, uh, loss will have a value, but over the 300 uh, simulations, this becomes a random variable and we calculate the expected value of this uh, random variable and also the standard deviation. Greater variability is telling us that uh, the system is uh, uh, less uh, stable. Well, limited uh, uh, standard deviation means that the system is uh, coping reasonably well with all these uh, adverse events. Um, okay, now the illustration of power loss distribution. Um, here it is just uh, to illustrate that the average power loss, uh, depending on how frequent the attacks are, of course, will uh, uh, change. The baseline, when there are no attacks, there are still losses due to accidental failures, but as soon as we try to start to introduce uh, attacks of different types, the more frequent they are, the higher the, uh, the losses. Um, and here we have a, a few attacks which uh, we played with. Um, one of the attacks is explicitly going, if, uh, uh, if the attack is successful, then one of the uh, assets uh, will be switched off, either a power line or a generator or a consumer. Another attack, very interesting, uh, uh, is uh, tempering with the configuration of the protection devices. Power lines have uh, protection devices so that uh, if the 
power through the power line exceeds a certain threshold, the protection devices will trip the power line so that it doesn't get uh, burned out. And here, one possibility is for these thresholds to be altered. And uh, you'll see that this is exactly what we uh, did uh, uh, in, the uh, in the comparison. Um, the setup, we have two systems, which are kind of similar, and the only difference is how we represent the uh, consequences of uh, successful attacks. In the first, uh, 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 in the, okay, so um, otherwise the systems are the same. The topology is the same, the parameters that we use for uh, accidental uh, failures and for the intensity of the attacks are uh, the same. Uh, so everything is the same except um, uh, really the uh, adversary models are uh, different. And how they differ? They differ that first of all, uh, one, this is system model one, where the whole uh, system is uh, simulated with a detailed adversary model. For instance, uh, if we go for uh, 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 changing the, this uh, threshold uh, value of the uh, protection device, it goes there and it changes to, to a value which is just above the current flow, but significantly lower than the, what it should be. Otherwise, uh, this makes the system very vulnerable. As soon as uh, even a minor uh, fault occurs elsewhere, this will trip a line and may trigger uh, quite a, a significant uh, chain events of, uh, uh, of cascade of uh, failures. The second model uses uh, this abstraction where we say if the uh, adversary is successful, they just go to the protection device and increase the uh, probability of uh, this device uh, malfunctioning. This is what the, uh, what the abstract model is uh, uh, doing here. I think these are probably summarized uh, and they differ option one, high fidelity model. Uh, and the second is the abstract model, which says the uh, reliability of the uh, compromised device deteriorates. By how much we use a single parameter, K, and this is the additional parameter which uh, we need to, uh, to take care of with the uh, models of uh, option two. And now, uh, so details. What this means, uh, that the attack, we, it's a detailed attack and we make an assumption that the attacker will do uh, exactly this, 10% about the current flow. And therefore, uh, any uh, future fault in the power system may trigger this attack. And the second is uh, K uh, with the abstract model uh, relying on the parameter K. And uh, K, we varied between 1, 10, 100, uh, up to 5,000. Uh, and the uh, intention here, we were looking to uh, set the K to a value where the expected loss under the two models will become uh, comparable. So the modeling it in in, in, in high fidelity, the consequences of the attacks and modeling it in the, with the abstract model, we try to get the expected value of the uh, power losses to be comparable. Here, uh, you can see we succeeded when we set this uh, value to, of K to 3,650, and then the, uh, uh, the supplied power, they're quite clear. Uh, we lost here slightly over 3% here, 2.3% 2, 2 uh, of the uh, total power. And uh, they are uh, they are very, very close. The standard deviation, however, uh, between these two is quite significant. Uh, the the, the st standard deviation in both cases, you can see that they differ very, very significantly. And now we can look at the, uh, the histograms, which represent the, uh, the two models. The abstract model is this. And the uh, uh, high fidelity data is this, uh, much more widely uh, spread are uh, the uh, losses over the 300 simulation. So there is no way that these two distributions can be considered uh, similar, although the uh, expected value, the expected values are not uh, that far apart here and here. They're not that uh, far, far apart. So, so how do we interpret these results? You may uh, ask. Uh, the fact that we succeeded to use a model which is uh, very abstract and possibly applicable to any uh, attack type, um, we could bring the expected loss uh, uh, 
closer to to the uh, uh, loss with the high fidelity uh, model. But um, okay, I, I tried to summarize it. Uh, okay, uh, expected loss. If this is of interest, there is a chance for this abstract model to to be uh, useful. If, uh, however, uh, and then the practical question is how we select uh, Q, uh, K, K, because in what we did, we did it retrospectively. We tried one, two, three, four, five, and then we said, okay, it works uh, with the 360, uh, uh, 3,650. But uh, if we don't really know the attack, how do we select this uh, case? One of the conjectures that I put here is that maybe if we have done uh, a number of uh, uh, known attacks and then pretended to fit the abstract model uh, and we produced a range of this uh, case, this will give us a reasonable feel about what uh, uh, the value of K uh, is. But this is just a conjecture. Probably more uh, studies, uh, more studies are necessary in order for us to uh, assess how credible this uh, conjecture uh, is. Um, observation two: the reward distribution. If we look at the distribution of the expected uh, uh, supply power, uh, the complementary value, the loss power. Um, it's not so good because the distributions are clearly very uh, different. What is interesting is that the, uh, the, the tail, the tail of uh, the, with the abstract model is much uh, nicer than the tail here. The tail is much, uh, 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 much shorter. It's much more condensed uh, distribution. While well, this distribution is much more widely spread, meaning that uh, the system is, uh, uh, more stable across uh, different uh, uh, different simulation. So, with a small uh, standard deviation, we can interpret this as uh, the uh, now as the as uh, uh, potentially some some something uh, something, uh, something which is uh, mm, optimistic uh, and potentially useful property of of, of the model. But again, this is uh, another. Uh, spin on the, the results rather than something that we can really immediately uh, make use of. Uh, and the uh, way forward, um, uh, one thing with the particular abstract model, the, I, I made this point earlier, but this is just the simplest version of, uh, of the model which was uh, developed uh, in the Israel paper. We could try to uh, use a more elaborate uh, model with the, uh, which will have a higher spread and possibly get uh, closer to the uh, distributions, not just to the uh, expected value. So this is all to be done uh, in the uh, future. Uh, and I think this is more or less uh, it. If somebody is interested uh, to read more about this uh, work, um, I will make this uh, presentation aware. You can have a look. Um, the studies are uh, included in a, in a couple of papers. So thank you very much. I think we managed to get just on time. Uh, so hopefully it was not a total waste uh, and you may have some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Um, questions? Any questions from the audience, please? Okay, Peter, I have I have a couple of questions if you don't know. Of course you do. Okay. Um, so a very practical question. I mean, um, I'm interested in to know that how realistic the cleansing or um, the cleansing could be. So um, for example, we are talking about we have a couple of IDSs uh, protecting an infrastructure, and there is an attack on one of the IDSs. I mean, in terms of how long will it take? How easy it is to actually cleanse and then reinstall? Um, it's, uh, it's definitely practical. I think I told you about this uh, work by the colleagues at the John Hopkins University in the States. They published uh, a number of articles uh, on uh, intrusion tolerance scatter. They 
deployed it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in a real utility uh, at, on Hawaii uh, power distribution uh, network, and the SCADA was uh, implemented uh, uh, using their, their tools. Um, so it's, work, it's uh, practical, it can be done, and it has been done uh, in some uh, settings. There is a resistance, uh, I'm, I, I'm sure, uh, because it is uh, quite uh, complex to do and uh, converting a legacy SCADA into intrusion tolerance SCADA uh, is not so much uh, probably a matter of uh, investment, but it is really to, to be uh, committed to, uh, to doing it. But in terms of practicality, practicality, there is no uh, no issue whatsoever. Uh, how long it takes, it really depends on the state, uh, because when you do proactive recovery, you take one uh, replica down, you cleanse it, put it uh, again, but then the remaining replicas need to share with this newly uh, included uh, replica. They become a quorum. They, the state which is maintained by the remaining replicas will have to be propagated to this. Uh, and it, it really depends on uh, what, uh, what the replica is doing. If the state is very small, it will be very done very quickly. If the state is uh, uh, colossal, uh, then it may take hours. Uh, I remember vaguely some of the publications of this uh, uh, colleagues again from uh, uh, John Hopkins, uh, one of the studies that they uh, reported uh, would require uh, propagating the state to newly involved, uh, newly integrated uh, replica up to eight hours. But this was because the state was uh, multi uh, gigabytes. So this required uh, time. And clearly, uh, if the state is uh, very large, this uh, puts a uh, some constraint, you can't uh, do the cleansing uh, very frequently because you need to propagate the state, which itself is a risk because uh, if you keep the system open for eight hours simply because the state needs to, prop need to be propagated, uh, this eight hours make it uh, probably easier to compromise more than one replica. And therefore, uh, the whole, this is part of the assumptions of uh, how uh, proactive recovery works. So interesting work, uh, practically demonstrated uh, the, the value, uh, but uh, the, the application really depends on the uh, application, the application itself, whether it is a simple or uh, very complex in terms of the state uh, uh, piece of software. Right, thank you. Um, so a related question to this, um, we are running an experiment with one of uh, my, my PhD student. I think he's, he's here uh, attending your talk. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to see whether a couple of ideas is their behavior, um, there's co coercion or you know, the degradation develops in their behavior over time. So um, we did this study in our D3S project as well, but um, we used unlabeled data. So we were not sure whether that, that study was right or wrong. So now we are doing it for a labeled data. So what essentially are we trying is, we are taking a label data and we are taking a couple of IDSs and we are analyzing the data with the older uh, rules and signature. And then we are trying to analyze the data with the newest rule. Like if you are analyzing data from 2018, what would happen if we analyze it with 2017 uh, signature and rules? And what would happen if we analyze it with, let's say 2019 and 20 rules and uh, signature? I wonder if this model can be used there um, but you are looking for signature. You are not looking for anything being uh, compromised. It, are you looking at the uh, the packets, the, the yeah. network traffic? So that's what so yeah. I'm not sure. What uh, this 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 is completely different. Uh, I'm looking at the effects of uh, compromising a piece of software, 
and compromising a piece of software, uh, Stuxnet. Somebody succeeded to plant uh, something in this software rather than controlling the uh, centrifuge uh, with the required uh, speed, it was doing something else. Clearly, it failed instantaneously. So in my terminology, this means that uh, the deterioration is uh, instantaneous and uh, complete. It's, it doesn't, uh, doesn't work at all. But in some cases, the, uh, the, the compromise may be such that it uh, fails every now and then. It's not uh, so blatantly uh, wrong. It just uh, every now and then does it. In fact, it, I remember reading about the Stuxnet, the early versions, they were doing exactly uh, this. They would uh, switch on and off some of the valves. This was all that the Stuxnet was doing. But switching on and off changes the, uh, the process of this uh, uranium, uh, whatever uh, they do. And therefore, the, you have to uh, throw away everything that uh, uh, was um, uh, affected simply because the, the process is meant to be stable with switching on and off every now and then it is not stable therefore the quality is uh, uh, affected. Um, so I have no doubts that uh, this abstract model is uh, in a sense uh, plausible if nothing else but uh, I don't think it applies to to the network traffic which uh, seems to right. be the uh, focus of what you're doing yeah. with your PhD student. Yeah okay thanks. Any other question uh, from the audience? Okay, if not, then uh, please join me in thanking Peter uh, for taking time and give us this very useful uh, talk uh, on a very something novel, uh, you know, the modeling aspect of uh, attack scenarios. So thank you, Peter. Um, you I much. would request you if you can share these slides. I will. With yes, me. I, I'll send you immediately yeah. after the, the session. I'll send you the file if somebody is interested. And please feel free to get in touch if you suddenly <laughs> become <laughs> uh, intrigued by what I, I have done. Uh, this work has yeah. been going on, especially the critical infrastructures uh, models uh, for many, many years. And it looks like we may uh, continue to... Yeah, Good. you know, we, we will talk, you know, we are talking about a proposal. So we are using this idea anyway in that proposal. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. Nice seeing um, you all and thank good you. luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. Nathan, my, my screen is frozen. So Nathan, can you please end the meeting because I can't do anything on my end. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Peter. Bye-bye.